<clears throat> Welcome to the third and final video, Converting Your Completed Square to Vertex Form. To recap the first two videos, we started with this standard form equation, that 3x squared minus 12x plus 7 is equal to 0. And remember, we set it to 0 because y will be 0 when it goes to the x-intercepts or, if they're imaginary, the two imaginary roots. We had factored out the 3. We had completed the square where it was x minus 2 squared equaling 5 thirds. And we now want to go into vertex form. Vertex form is where y is equal to a times the binomial x minus h squared plus k. h and k are the vertex. If you'll recall, when we had the standard form, 7 actually represents our y-intercept. The y-intercept is when x is 0, we know the value of y. When x is 0, there's 0, we can find the y-intercept. If we set it to 0, x squared, 0 squared becomes 0 times 3 is 0, minus 12 times 0 is 0. All we're left with is a 7. So 7 is equal to y. So that's our y-intercept. Now, I told you we had to save that 3 that we factored out because we need to put it back into our equation to get to the vertex form. This is actually our a. So I will multiply each side by 3. This becomes 3 x minus 2 squared equals, and this is 3 over 1, so 3 times 5 is 15 divided by 3 is 5. We're very close to our vertex form. There's our a, and even if there wasn't an a in the factor out number, had there not been anything to factor out, our a would just be the identity of 1. <clears throat> Here's my x, here's my h. Again, if this had been a positive, it would just mean that a negative times a negative was a positive. And it's squared, and it equals 5. I need to get this 5 out of here because I need to get back to a 0 because that's what my y equals. When I get to a 0, I can sub in y for that 0. This is simply taken care of by subtracting 5. Now I have 3 x minus 2 squared minus 5 equals 0. 0 is what I had set my equation to. I had set y to 0, so y can now go in here. Symmetrically flipping this, we can comfortably say, state that y is equal to 3 x minus 2 squared minus 5. We had found our roots previously in video 2. We know that this is positive, so the end directions are going up. The vertex is easy to find because this is in vertex form. What does x have to be to make this 0 out? A positive 2. There's a negative 5, so my vertex is at 2, negative 5. 2, negative 5. The axis of symmetry is a vertical line, so it's an x equals. Well, this is going to go right here, so x is always equal to 2. Now I've filled all this out. I'm ready to graph, except for I want to check. Is this really the same equation we started with? It should be. We just manipulated it. So let's put in a 0. 0 minus 2 is negative 2. Negative 2 squared is um, 4. 4 times 3 is 12. 12 minus 7 is 12 minus 5. That's my 7. So this is still the same equation as this. This is when it's in standard form. This is when it's in vertex form, sometimes referred to as graphing form. I'm almost done because I know that 0 and 7 are here. But to get a good graph, I need to do a little t-chart. It's nice to know my vertex is 2, negative 5. 
And from 2, I want to go a few points over. We'll say 3 and 4. And a few to the left, 1 and 0. Well, we already found 0. It's 7. The nice thing about a t-chart and a parabola is these two inputs should result in the same outputs because it's symmetrical. And these two inputs should result in the same output as well. So, put in a 1. 1 minus 2 is negative 1. Negative 1 squared is 1. 1 times 3 is 3. 3 minus 5, negative 2. I should get the same when I plug this in if I didn't do anything wrong. And if I did do something wrong, I'll go back and fix it. 3 minus 2 is 1. 1 squared is 1. 1 times 3 is 3. 3 minus 5, negative 2. Put a 4 in. 4 minus 2 is 2. 2 squared is 4. 4 times 3 is 12. 12 minus 5 is 7. It is symmetrical, as expected. 4 and 7. 3 and negative 2. 1 and negative 2. And let's get in my parabola. It's not a V. It's sort of a U-ish V. That's not too bad. Now, if it ends on it, keeps going. By the way, I didn't ask this, but these are going to continue to spread out left and right. Very slowly, but for an infinite number of x values, I will eventually cover all of them. So the domain is all real numbers. The range, though, is the y values. And you notice that this is the lowest I can go. I have a minimum. I have all the numbers above it. So the range is y is um, all real numbers, all real numbers greater than or equal to negative 5. Something nice to put in there. The range is all real numbers greater than 5. Just a little side note there. But here you have it. I've got all the information required and I've converted to vertex form and I've even graphed it. There you go.